Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover. I'm here with Sherrod Singhal. And the machine is something that has been talked about and is, is becoming a reality here at, at HP Labs. And I'm curious about the new initiative that you guys are trying to do as much with the machine in open source as possible. Yes. Could you talk about that? Sure. So as we are thinking about the machine and as the hardware is coming together, what we need to do is make sure that there's an ecosystem around it. It's a completely new architecture. And because it is a new architecture, it will take time for people to get on board. It will take uh, people effort to actually understand what the differences are. And in order to do that, they have to have tools, all of the different tools that they need to write new kinds of programs, understand if they migrate their existing programs onto the machine, what impact will they have, uh, where programs need to be changed, how they should modify it. So what we are doing is essentially going out into the open with all of the things we ourselves are working on. And instead of uh, doing all the work and then releasing code into the open source, the plan here is that we will do our own development in the open, and that means all of the people who are in the community will see exactly the same code that we are seeing and have the ability to work with the same code that we are working on even as we are developing the machine. And that is what is different about this piece of work. We are announcing these things and we are making these tools and the technologies that we are working on available much, much earlier in the life cycle than we would normally have even within an open source context. And this allows the community to both see what we are doing, help us fix what we are doing wrong, and participate in the site, the same environment. So, so you're really kind of allowing people to see the code as it's being written. Um, Absolutely. And, and I understand, so there, there's a little bit of a, a tongue in cheek here of there's yes. a, a standard issue uh, toolbox behind you that um, I think it was 30 years ago, HP, yeah. HPU yeah. employees got, got this toolbox. And so today, the, the toolbox is really on GitHub, probably. And That's not, correct. That's uh, correct. And, and so what what kinds of things are you guys exposing as part of this, this developer toolbox yes. Um, yes. that's so in the, open source right now. The, just a little bit more about the toolbox and then I'll get to what we are exposing. Um, when you look at a toolbox, it looks like a whole bunch of disconnected pieces. I have a pair of pliers, it looks nothing like a screwdriver, looks nothing like a hammer. And if you just shoot, look at the toolbox and the items inside the toolbox in isolation, and you say, here is a collection of tools. Um, people scratch their heads and say, and why do I need this one? But it's when you start building something larger out of that thing that you suddenly realize each item has a piece, each item has a place. For every little bit of work I have to do, I have to reach for a different tool in the toolbox. The same thing is happening in software because I'm recrafting the entire operating system uh, software stack all the way from operating systems up to applications. As we are building our own work, we are finding the need for different types of tools. We are finding the need for different kinds of things we have to be able to do. So we are, because we are developing all of these pieces together, we are beginning to expose these things, which if you look at it in isolation, looks like a whole bunch of disjoint software. But that's not the issue. The issue is that because we are recrafting the entire software stack, all of these things are necessary. And depending on which layer of software you're working on, different pieces of the software we are exposing will become helpful. Going back to your other question about what we are exposing, at the lowest layer, we want to, we are making changes in the Linux operating system. And what we want to do is essentially feed all of the changes we are making into the machine as we are making them back into the upstream community. The community has its own process for looking at it, making sure that the things are compatible with what's already being done. But the intent is that by the time the hardware comes, Linux will already be machine ready. So the people who buy the hardware have a pre all of the capabilities that are needed to run on the machine already inside the existing open source environment. And I assume that there is some sort of reference hardware, hardware that is being developed yes, against it. Yes, against it. Um, most of the things we are developing, we are running our version of Linux and the changes we are feeding side by side on our large memory machines as well as on the machine hardware as it becomes available to us. So. We are working on two parallel things. One which is using the tools we are creating directly on our platform, which is the machine platform. But side by side, we are also now putting the next layer up, which is for people who have the standard 
architecture so standard computers providing them with an emulation environment where they can experiment without the machine hardware in place so they can start writing code start understanding what means we are creating performance emulation tools so that once you have written a piece of code you can again insert our tools compile your code with our tools and that allows you to make changes inside the performance characteristics so you can say this part of my data resides in persistent memory this part of my data resides in DRAM and here are the differences in the for example latency or bandwidth and that would allow you to profile your application on standard hardware on top of that we are now looking at programming models and programming environments uh, we have made uh, announcement in March around a, a collaboration with Hortonworks to make uh, Spark available on the machine. Th again, those changes are being fed by Hortonworks into the Spark environment as open source. So people who are writing analytics frameworks on Spark will have the ability to look at, basically continue to run things there. Side by side, we are looking at uh, programming models where I can insert code uh, at a compiler level into executables that might make the code that people are creating fault tolerant so that if the machine crashes I mean in a large scale system crashes are always present faults are always present when something crashes because memory is persistent I don't want data to get corrupted so one can define critical sections inside the code and say these sections have to have a all or nothing semantics and make sure that in the presence of failures these things persist we are simplifying programming models for Java and C++ uh, developers to say I can just essentially extend an object which is defined as a persistent object or I could effectively label a data structure in my program as being persistent and at that point I just write my code like I do and the data I have labeled as persistent stays persistent when a next process comes in it picks up the same data structure and continues. That gets, lets us get rid of all of the I.O. pieces. And finally, on top, we are building a few example applications to show people how the entire stack would work together. And the intent is that all of the work we are doing in that entire structure, in, in that entire stack, uh, we will be working in the open. So with all the good, the bad, the ugly that goes with writing code, we will be exposing that to the community, letting the community see what we are doing so they can learn from us. But more important that, that I think as people start looking at our code, they'll find all kinds of problems in what we are doing. Uh, there are plenty of smart people out there who will look at us and say, you know what, you guys don't know how to write code. <laughs> uh, let me show you how it should really be done. And we really welcome that kind of feedback and input because it will help us all develop to the environment where we are all excited about it and we want the community to be excited about it and by the time people get hardware in their hands they have an understanding of what it is good for where I can continue to use my existing environments where I get so much performance difference and or so much new stuff I could do on this and new architecture that I have to make changes and I'm ready for those changes that's that's very cool yes. I mean to me this is a this is a fundamental shift sure. in the way that people are, are developing uh, an entire yes. ecosystem. Yes. Um, usually what happens in an open source environment is that people make changes, people create branches. In a lot of cases, at least in a commercial setting, people keep those branches uh, to themselves. Yeah. Right, they don't feed it back. Even when they do feed things back into the community, they tend to do the work, understand what it does, um, recognize why there is a benefit to doing it in the open source, and then they release effectively software which has already been baked through. Right, I'm, I'm offering so, so you the like a release, cycle, right? release cycle. We are saying we are going to move our working repositories outside the firewall. Um, we will be working in them. We, we, I'm sure people will be observing us over our shoulders as we are working. And then if people wish to participate, um, we welcome all participation in, from the community because at the end of the day, um, as we go in this direction, um, we have to get the community excited and I'm sure that the community will be able to find many, many, many more things that they can do with this architecture than we can dream about. Well, Sherrod, I, I look forward to seeing uh, this evolve out in the open because I think the, the machine is uh, a long time coming and, and actually having all of the pieces there and, and watching it come to life is, is going to be exciting. I, I think it's exciting as well. Really like all right. That. Well, thank you. Thank you.